been desperate. <laughs> That's actually what I was going to start with tonight. Have you ever been desperate? Have you ever been desperate in your life? Have you ever felt desperate? Have you ever felt like you are desperate for something to happen in your life? I have. I'm sure we all have. Um, desperation is, is really something we don't like to feel in our life. We don't, let, we don't like what it looks like. We don't like what it feels like. But I remember a time in my life when I felt desperate. Now, it was when I was in the 8th grade. Now, you wouldn't think you'd feel a lot of desperation in 8th grade, but I did. You see, I was a pretty good kid in school. I mean, I didn't, I didn't get in trouble. I always tried to do what the teacher told me to do. I always raised my hand when the teacher had a question. I always got upset when other kids tried to get the teacher upset. And we had kids who, who loved to rattle the teacher and get them all focused and all this kind of stuff. And that always bothered me. I never liked to see that happen. So I was a pretty good kid. Uh, you see, I wasn't much of a risk taker because I didn't want to get in trouble uh, with my teacher because I knew that then I would get in trouble at home. And so it just wasn't worth the double risk to me to even, to even do that. But I was also a preacher's kid, which comes, which has some other things come with it. Um, and people in class knew that. They knew that I was a preacher's kid. And they knew that I was a goody two-shoes and that I tried to always stay on the right side of the teacher. As a matter of fact, when I got the progress reports, you know, they call them progress reports now, used to be called report cards. Um, that would be sent home. You know the report cards that were sent home, they were on sort of like cardstock paper. It's pretty heavy. And they were folded and, and they were in that little envelope and they would send them home. And I remember um, when it was report card day, everybody was kind of concerned about what was going to happen. And so when I got home with my report card, I always had B's and C's. A couple A's maybe if I was taking gym or PE. Um, so I'd get an A in that. But everything else, I was pretty much a B and C student. But that wasn't the good thing. The good thing was the notes. You know, there's always a spot where teachers had to write notes. You know, and, and the notes on the bottom of the report card always read this. Johnny is a joy to teach. I enjoy having Johnny in my class. Johnny doesn't talk very much. It's good to have him in class. So I always liked reading those. My parents always liked reading those because there wasn't much stress to it. So being a kid that was pretty good in class and always tried to do what was right was good, except for those kids who didn't like goody two-shoes. And there were kids who didn't like goody two-shoes. They didn't like those kids that always tried to be good in class, that always raised their hand, that always did their assignments. They didn't like those kids. And so what they would try to do is they would try to get that kid in trouble. They would always tell the teacher I was talking, I wasn't talking. They would always tell the teacher, they would throw a piece of paper and always say it was Johnny that did it. You know, try to get me in trouble, never happened. Uh, they, everything went smooth and, and everything was going smooth until that one kid. You know, there's that one kid that, I, I just had it. I mean, I just had it with this kid. I mean, I just could not take it anymore with this kid. He had always picked on me, he had always bullied me. So that one day, I don't know, I blacked out or lost focus or something about being the kid that didn't take the risk. And this kid was walking beside me in the class. And the teacher had her back to everybody. She was writing on the board. And I remember the kid walked beside me. And I don't even remember what he said. But he made some kind of statement. And my arm just got a twitch in it. And I just kind of did that. And the kid went flying over the desk. He went falling on the floor. He rolled. He kicked the teacher's desk. And the teacher turned around and said, Who was that that did that? I blacked out. I had no idea what she was talking about. And so I looked around. I was as shocked as anybody that anybody would do something like that. I didn't say anything. I, I just stood there. Nobody. I think everybody else was more stunned that I actually did something than the teacher called on. And so nobody said anything. Everybody was just flabbergasted. They, they couldn't believe that the preacher's kid, the goody two-shoes, had actually knocked somebody over a desk. And so I just stood there. And I remember everything was good until the teacher looked straight in my eyes. And the, the little the kid that I had knocked over the desk stood up and he looked at the teacher. And he said, Johnny did it. Johnny knocked me over this desk. And I remember the look my teacher gave me as she looked square in my eyes and then she said, Johnny would never do that. Freedom! <laughs> Freedom! 
And if, did, I, did I correct her? Absolutely not. No. Uh, did everybody look at me? Absolutely. And I just sat there uh, in my moment of desperation knowing that I could have very easily said, you know, I did do that. I'm sorry. I apologize. But I didn't. Why? I was desperate. I was in a situation where I knew if I got caught doing that, I would probably be suspended. That was a word I never wanted to hear. Um, I love school. I, I didn't want my parents to hear that. I mean, that's like being in prison to me. I mean, I was so afraid of that word. And so when she looked at me and said, Johnny wouldn't do that because Johnny's too good of a person to do that. I looked at the class as if to say, oh yeah, I'm not that good. <laughs> but I was desperate, man. I was so nervous. I was so scared but it didn't happen. Desperation. We don't like to get that feeling. We don't like to know how that uh, feels to be desperate. But desperation does things to people that we really don't expect. Desperation makes us act in ways we never thought we would act. Desperation makes us say things we never thought we would say. Desperation makes us just a different person and takes us totally out of, out of character. Tonight, we look at another giant that David faces. And he's facing tonight the giant of desperation. Our passage tonight is found in 1 Samuel chapter 21. And, and in order to get to where we are with David tonight, we need to go back and see where David came from. We know that David was the one who uh, Samuel anointed as king of Israel. And he suddenly found himself running from Saul because Saul was trying to kill him. Saul was trying to take his life. And it wasn't because of anything David did. David, you see did everything right. David was known as a man after God's own heart. And, and David did the right thing so well and so much that Saul wanted David with him. Because Saul knew that he needed David. When David conquered Goliath, as, as David was going uh, to conquer Goliath, we learned last week that Saul actually asked um, one of his uh, generals in the army, he said, who is that kid? And he said, I don't know. And he said, we'll find out. And they said, well, it's Jesse's son. And he said, I want him with me. And so Saul kept David with him. David did everything right, but, but everything was going smooth until those ladies started singing. Now, I'm not blaming women tonight for this, but the Scripture tells us that the ladies, when Saul and David came back from battling in the army, that these ladies started dancing around singing, Saul has killed his thousands, and David has killed his ten thousands. And it was at that minute that Saul began to think, wait a second. You know, they're, they're crediting him with many more deaths than I got. And it was at that point, not because of anything David did, but something came inside of Saul. This feeling, this jealousy, this anger came inside of Saul. This fear of what David might do. And he began to get angry. And he began to try to hurt David. Matter of fact, he tried to kill David six times with spears. Uh, he tried to kill David other ways. He was just trying to get rid of David. And, and we know that David was desperate. David was running for his life. Even though he had a best friend, Jonathan, who was Saul's son, he was still running for his life. And David became desperate. You see, even David was desperate in times. Even David, this man who was after God's own heart, who wanted to do everything right, who tried to live for God all the time, even David knew there comes times when you're desperate and you just gotta you gotta do things. So tonight, we look at our scripture, and what we're gonna see tonight is, is how sometimes even the best of people get affected by this giant of desperation. So we want to see some things that happened to David tonight as he was facing this giant of desperation. We're gonna look at our passage, which is first uh, Samuel chapter 21. We begin with verse 1. Here's what it says. David went to Nob, to, a, to Ahimelech, the priest. Ahimelech trembled when he met him and asked, Why are you alone? Why is no one with you? Now the first thing we notice, and this may sound strange to us, but the first thing we notice happened to David when he became desperate was he ran to church. Now that sounds strange to us because we go to church every Sunday, every Sunday night. Sometimes, you know, every other Wednesday night. So church is something we're used to. But when people become desperate, they are looking for that place to go for safety. They are looking for that place to go to be helped. And the scripture tells us 
that David, in his danger, in his desperation, when he felt his life was in danger, David decided to run to church. And he's looking for help. And so he goes to this priest, Ahimelech. Now, Nob is a place, uh, just a little background, Nob is a place that was basically called the city of priests. Ahimelech had 85 priests that worked under him. And so this was a place that had a lot of churches, a lot of priests. It was sort of like a monastery. And so David runs to him, and he's really looking for help. He's not looking to worship. He's not looking to, to read the Bible. David is basically looking for help. And I started thinking about this, this verse tonight, and I started thinking, wouldn't it be great if everybody that was desperate went to church? Wouldn't it be great if everybody that was looking for help would come to church? That would be awesome because that would mean the church is doing what the church is supposed to do. And that is being that, that source of refuge, that source of strength for those who are hurting, for those who are desperate in life. But a lot of people don't do that. They've grown where they don't trust the church. They, they don't believe the church is what it's supposed to be. And that's a challenge to us. That's a challenge to us as God's people, as followers of Christ, that we need to be that lighthouse for people. We need to be that source of strength. For people, so maybe they will come to the church when they become desperate. Well, that's what happened to David. He became desperate, and the first thing we see is that David ran to the church out of desperation. But here's the second thing that happened, and this is what happens sometimes when we become desperate. I told you, desperation causes people to get out of character. And here's what happened. First Samuel 21, 2 through 3. David answered Ahimelech, the priest, okay? Remember the priest said, Why are you here alone? Where's our best with you? This is what David said. The king sent me on a mission and said to me, No one is, that's supposed to be two, no one is to know anything about the mission I am sending you on. As for my men, I have told them to meet me at a certain place. Now then, what do you have on hand? Give me five loaves of bread or whatever you can find. Now look at this. Look what David says. Now let me ask you this. Was David on a mission for the king? No, he wasn't. David was running from the king. But you see, in desperation, what happens is we get so caught up and so afraid and so scared, we get out of character. And one of the things that happened to David when he got out of character is he began to lie. He began to tell things that were not true. This wasn't David. But this is what happens when we face the giant of desperation. David told him, he said, well, you see, I'm on a mission from the king. And the mission said, oh, the king said, don't tell anybody that you're on this mission. Because I don't need anybody to know it. And he said, for my, fin, my friends, they're not here because I told them to meet me at some other place. So you see what's happened here. David, because of the desperation he's in, has moved out of character. And he's lying to the priest. He's lying to the priest. And, and notice David, when he said that, and he goes right into really what he's wanting, really what he's there for. Now then, what do you have on hand? Give me five loaves of bread. Or whatever you have. Ahimelech was shaking when he came. He didn't know what David was there for. But he did know one thing. David was there for a reason. And you see when David said this to Ahimelech. He had no reason to not believe David. I mean after all. David was Saul who was the king. It was his son-in-law. I mean he had married Michael the king's daughter. And he was the daughter a son-in-law of the king. Plus, Ahimelech knew David was a great warrior. After all, he had defeated Goliath. And so he knew about David. He was shaking when David came in. He didn't have any reason to not believe David. But the thing he did know was this. He had no bread. Look what happened. But the priest answered David, I don't have any ordinary bread, bread on hand. However, there is some consecrated bread here, provided the men have kept themselves from women. Now, consecrated bread. The priest did not have any just ordinary bread lying around for David to eat. The priest, once a week, would take 12 loaves of bread and they would place them on the table in, in the, the place there. And after a week, only after a week, only the priest could come in and eat that bread. Now remember, it's a week old. so And it's been out. But it's been consecrated. It was known as holy bread. And so that's what the priest was telling him. He's like, David... I don't have any ordinary bread. I can't just give you bread because this is consecrated bread. This is holy bread. This is only for the priest. 
But notice what else happens when people are desperate. Not only did David lie to the priest, but in his lying to the priest, it caused the priest to kind of wonder, what should I do? Because you see, the priest knew what he was supposed to do. No way he was supposed to give that bread to anybody. That was holy bread. That was only for the priest. But in this desperation that David brought to him, it caused him to think, do I go against the rules and give this bread to David? Or do I keep doing what I'm doing and not help David out? You see, David had caused the priest to wonder about going against what he knew he was supposed to do right. You see, when we get desperate and we begin to lie and get out of character, it not only affects us, but it affects other people that we are dealing with. Desperation. And so he told him, he said, I don't have any word in bread. But he says, I have this consecrated bread, provided the men have kept themselves from women. And here's what David says to him. And David answered the priest and said to him, Of a truth women have been kept from us about th these three days since I came out. And the vessels of the young men are holy. And the bread is in a manner common, yea, though it were sanctified this day, in the vessel. Notice what David says to him. And this is what happens also when we become desperate. When we become desperate, we begin to make the Scripture fit what we need it to fit in our lives. Okay? We may know the Scripture, we may know what the Scripture says, but when we become desperate, we look at it and we say, well, I think I can turn this Scripture around to really be okay for me. And that's what he does with this. He, he goes up to the priest and he says, well, you know, really, bread is bread. You know, if you think about it, Ahimelech, bread is bread. It's cooked in the same oven. It's made out of wheat and flour. It's really nothing different with it. Bread is in a manner common. You know, it all is cooked the same way. So, really, you're not doing anything wrong if you give me this bread. Yeah, I know you want to call it holy, but bread is bread. It really doesn't make any difference. You see what David's doing? David, out of his desperation, lies. Then he gets Ahimelech to get out of his character. And then David takes the scripture and kind of twists it so that he can get what he wants. And I'm sure Ahimelech, as he is looking at this, is beginning to wonder, am I doing the right thing? Am I really doing what God would have me to do? And David says, you know, we've been away from women and we need the bread. Well, it's the same thing that causes us to get out of character when we are facing desperation in our lives. You see, tonight, desperation may not be something you're dealing with. But I want to assure you that as we deal in life with people, there are many people who are facing desperation. There are many people who are desperate in their lives. They are hurting. They are looking for things. They are needing help. Some people may be even running from sins in their lives. They may be running from God because God is talking to them, speaking to them, and they know that, and so they're desperate, and they're trying to get away from God. Whether it's you or whether it's a friend, remember that when times become desperate, center our minds and our thoughts upon God. Live for Him, and trust Him to face the giant in your life. God will give you power. God will give you strength and the ability to keep calm and in control. And that sounds good. That all sounds great. But I want to tell you it's tough. When you become desperate in life, it's tough. But we can't be a group of people who judges people. We have to be a group of people who help people. And that's what Ahimelech finally figured out. You see, I'm not supposed to give him that bread, but David needs help. Remember, I went back earlier and I said, wouldn't it be great if people who are hurting and desperate would come to church? Well, if we want that to happen, we've got to be the church that they feel comfortable coming to. We've got to be the church that helps people, that supports people, and that wants people to be taken care of in life. You see, David, David stepped out of character. David took his mind off of God. David took his focus off of God. This was the same David who, when the giant came nine feet of him, over nine feet of him came, David didn't flinch because he focused on God. This was a man who, when he was a shepherd, as a young boy, took care of lions and bears so he could watch his sheep because he kept his mind and eyes focused on God. And now here he is in a desperate situation, 
Sure, Samuel, Saul's after him. Sure, Saul's trying to kill him. But he could have relied on that strength and that power that he did earlier. But instead, he took his eyes off God and he began to get desperate. You know, we're told in the scripture that Peter, when Jesus came to them, Peter said, Lord, if that's you, allow me to walk on the water. And Jesus said, Come. And Peter got out of the boat and he began to walk on the water until he became desperate. And when he became desperate, he took his eyes off God and he began to sink. Folks, desperation causes us to take our eyes off of God. This giant of desperation causes us to take our thoughts off of God. It causes us to lie. It causes us to, to twist Scripture. It causes us to affect other people's lives. And I think what God wants us to know tonight is this. Keep your eyes on me. Keep your eyes focused on me so that we can get through this desperation together. You know, there were two things that David found in the church. After he asked Ahimelech, he said, Don't you have a spear or sword here? I haven't brought my sword or any other weapon because the king's mission was urgent. That's another way he, he told a lie to Ahimelech. And there were two things though, that David looked for in the church. David looked for food and he looked for weapons. David looked for two things that he felt he needed in life. Now we can look at David and say, Out of his desperation he lied. And out of his desperation he, he caused Ahimelech to do things. Out of his desperation... He took his eyes off God. But actually, when you look at it, what David did was went to the church for two things that we all need. Nourishment and strength and safety and protection. So I challenge us tonight with this question. Are we being the church that allows people to face the giants in their lives? Are we being the church where people, when they're hurting and when they're, they're desperate and when they feel afraid, can they come to the church knowing the church will provide me what I need in life? Maybe safety, maybe a prayer. Maybe somebody just to pat them on the back and tell them that God will be with them. It may be encouragement in some small way. But just as David faced the giant in his life, there are people all around us who are facing giants. And what they need to know is I have a place I can go so that I can find that refuge of strength that God can give me. Would you pray with me, please? <clears throat> Dear God, we thank you for, for the opportunity we have to worship you tonight. Father, we thank you for, for this message and this story that helps us understand that we can face giants in our lives, and with your help we can get through them. And Father, maybe there's one here today this evening who is dealing with desperation in their lives. They are trying their best to do what God would have them to do. And they're desperate. They're hurting. And Lord, they need to find that help in you. So Lord, tonight I pray that you will meet our needs. That you will help us to, to fight desperation with your help. Not to go at it alone, but to seek your help and seek your power and strength so that we can fight it and move on in life. Be with us as we sing this final song. Help us to respond right where we're standing and ask you to be with us as we face the giants in our lives. For we ask it in your name. Amen.